All right. Watch the curves. Well. All right, we'll just hold you guys. So, it is 6:24. Um, today is opening day of Nebraska turkey season for Bo. Uh, we did get to hunt today. Uh, because we both had some stuff going on, but we're going right now to a public spot. Uh, and hopefully gonna go try and roost a bird that we're gonna hunt in the morning. And the problem with tomorrow is we can only hunt like three quarters of the day because we have a Delta waterfowl meeting we have to go to tomorrow. And it has been like a fiasco of a hunting, like getting this hunting trip lined up a little bit. We're not even like three hours in. Yeah, and we've it's, already had... It's already stressful. <laughs> yeah, so first thing we had to do was my Vortex 10x42 Diamondbacks, the ones that I've used for the last couple years. The focus knob on them was like getting gummed up. Sometimes it would spin freely and work good, sometimes it wouldn't. And I really didn't want to have to mess with that, so we stopped at Shields. Um, luckily, Vortex, they have a sweet system and a warranty program, so all we had to do was walk in with the old binos and they gave us a new pair. So shout out to Shields and Vortex. Um, like I said, I'll leave all the links to this equipment and I'll probably flash it across the screen what I'm using, but they're great binos. And so we got that figured out, ran across the river into Nebraska to go buy my license and my tag. And we wait at Walmart in the hunting section for a half an hour while probably a dozen employees walked by and each of them radioed for help and we never got any help back there. Finally, some some kid comes back and he's trying to print it out and he asked what I needed I said I need a habitat stamp and my turkey tag and he goes well I can do the habitat stamp but I can't do the turkey tag I was like well, what do you mean he goes well I can't print that we only do small game and I was like he has a full-size printer fence full, full full sheets of paper so I don't know why he couldn't print my turkey tag but anyway we bought it online we're gonna run to Turbo's College after we go rooster bird and oh, yo. We're gonna go print off my tag. Then we're gonna go to our hotel and check in and get everything ready for the morning. Probably not sleep much because we're both gonna be so pumped to go out and first hunt of the year for turkeys anyway and kick off the 2022 season. But we're about half hour, 25 minutes from the spot. Uh, when Turbo's been researching the spot pretty heavy on Onyx and, and we know we're in a good area. So we'll see you guys when we're out there trying to roost a bird. See if you can get him to gobble. Or back up so I can get these other two. That's good. That one's a long beard too. As you guys seen, the footage I'm sure was shaky, but we just seen our first three toms of the trip. How you feeling? Hype, bro. Dude, we're both pumped. Um, we're a couple minutes out from the public spot, and um, yeah. So we're gonna run out and try and roost a turkey, see if we can see some, and see what we. Kind of. Oh, there's turkeys. Out. Yeah, we know we're in the right area, and we kind of know where those turkeys are. So in the all fails, maybe we can go get permission tomorrow and. But we'll just see what happens. We're gonna take it slow, and at least now going forward in the season, we we have a spot where we know there's turkeys. So this looks like a really nice field. But all right, we'll see you guys at the public spot.
have hills around our area that are pretty big. But this, like the way their hills roll, and it's just thick timber all the way. And you get little clear cuts like this. It's so pretty. Well, I finally got to the hotel. It's like 11 at night. Yeah, we're just kind of getting everything kind of ready for tomorrow. Um, I'm tired. We end up running into a group of hunters um, that are camping out there and pretty good guys. So if you guys are seeing this, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Bro, they didn't give me a here. <laughs> what? No way. Like, oh, wait, oh, oh, it is. That had to be here. Yeah. What's this? Anyway, Dom's messing with an MRE. Um, we got everything pretty much that we need for tomorrow. Finally got the tag situation figured out. We had to go to USD and print it. I'm tired, so I'm going to get all my stuff plugged in and hit the hay. Alright, well, we just got to the public spot. Um, we're pretty early. We're going to go get set up on a ridge um, where we can kind of be. We're kind of in the middle of where we're possibly going to hear birds, so we can listen to both sides. Um, we'll have about probably an hour before sunset or before sunrise. Once we get up there, a little bit of a hike in the dark, and well, we got everything set up. Turbo's ready to go. I promise I'm way more excited than I sound. I'm just tired. We just got a couple hours of sleep. That was pretty much it. And we're gonna grab everything, and this will officially be the first morning of the 2022 turkey season. Sir. All right. I'm pumped, and it's gonna be a good year. Got a lot of big stuff coming. So we'll see you guys. We'll see how first light goes, see if we hear anything, and I'll give you guys an update when we get up and it gets light out. We're no longer at the public spot. We are on a piece of private. We just went and got permission on. We spotted three turkeys off the road heading our way. Um, we're going to go and try and work them, and it's going to be pretty much just go and reap them. Let's try and get it set up and make them come into us. We're pretty pumped. It was kind of getting down on us this morning, but... Yeah. We heard, like, two birds, like, way off, though. Like, I'm talking, like, probably... Mile. Yeah. Like, at least a thousand yards off. So, we're going to go and try and get set up on these but birds. these three birds are moving this way, so we need to get going. Yeah. I'm I'm not even bringing my big camera. I'm literally just taking my bow, and I'll run my GoPro on my bow.
that that was a day that's uh early afternoon and one of the longest days of hunting i've had in a while yeah um so we started off the morning you guys seen we were at that public spot and we didn't we heard some birds that are way you know thousand plus yards away enough for you to barely hear them um and we left there and we went and we're driving around and looking for some other public and we didn't find any public pieces that really triggered you know the urge to want to go get in there and we were on our i mean we we're kind of heading back towards home and kind of looking and out of the corner of my eye we just happened to catch three birds on a private piece of a field and so we went up and flipped yui and seen them again and then we quick hopped on on x and to find the landowner and luckily the landowners lived on the other side of the property so we drove around and went up and talked to him super awesome guy super friendly about letting us hunt um so when we got permission we came back and at this time there's probably been 15 20 minutes since we'd seen the birds and they'd only moved probably 200 yards since then yeah and then so we parked and we came up and we originally came we're trying to diagonal towards them and get in front of them and we weren't where we wanted to be so we backed out and we came up on top of this hill and we're gonna get try and get way ahead of the birds and get set up so we had time to so they could see the reaper out here um and i'll kind of let you go through that part yeah there. so i really just wanted to you know any situation when they're moving a direction you just kind of think to try to cut them off and that's kind of what i was going for and we did it perfectly, honestly, you know, we kind of worked around this hill here to where they weren't going to, you know, we didn't, obviously we were trying to get to where we, uh, to a position where they couldn't see us working around the hill, obviously, but once we got up to the crest of this hill here, I wanted to get to a spot where I could kind of see down in the timber there and then also see in this hill. Well, I didn't get far enough up to where I could see down at the bottom of this little hill here because, you know, these are just up and down hills or, you know, it's, it's not like a, a gradual change, it's, but... Anyways, we saw these birds working this way uh, before we kind of worked over here, set up over here, and we were kind of working over here. We sat up for, we were probably set here for what, 10, 15 minutes? 10 minutes. And I was messing with my camera, just trying to get it ready for hopefully a bird to come in. And I was still messing with it, and then I kind of look under the fan, under the reaper, and there's two gobblers at like five yards, and my heart just dropped. Like, and I looked back because I was, you know, hoping Hedden would see them and it was already ready. Yeah, so what I was but, doing, I yeah. was on my phone. I was on on X and I was trying to, I was going to look at the train, look at the property line, see where these, I was like, man, these we haven't seen these birds. I was expecting them to see them on top of the hill yeah. 200 yards away. But they must have just been a little bit ahead of that and they see the top of that fan. So I was looking on X trying to figure out where these birds could have went and see if there's somewhere else we could try and cut them off. And all of a sudden, I, I out of the corner of my ear, like I, I barely hear Turbo say, they're here or something like that. And I look over, and there's two full strut Tom. Oh, I wish it would have gotten five gobbled yard, because they're five yards from they middle. gobbled at before they gobbled up probably, I don't know, eight yards and then came in the three yards, and that's when Hedden actually shot it. But oh my gosh, if I would have got the camera on, like, I don't know, five, ten seconds earlier. I would have got that gobble at like eight yards right there. Oh, it was, it was so cool, dude. And you know, when you hit, when you hit him, I I thought for sure he was you know flopping down the hill and dead. Well, he, he flew off. I saw where he flew off, and you know, I'll kind of let you go through that. But yeah, so you know, we don't have to. I see the birds come up over the hill, and I I'm I I'm get to like quarter draw, and I seen one of their heads kind of look over me, so I stopped, and then. They looked right back at the reaper, and so I, I drew and I stood up just because I could barely see the tops of the body, and I didn't want to go for a headshot at, you know, now that I look at it, that's close to 30 yards, and at the time I thought it was only 20, and so I stood up and I shot the bird, and you know, you can tell when you shoot something with a bow, if you get like a center body hit, you can just hear that cavity kind of pop, or you know the bones you can hear the bones cracking so i knew i hit the bird and he flew off and yeah it was it was quite the situation but you know stuff like this is it's something that a lot of people don't address and if you you know there's a lot of times this stuff happens and you don't ever hear about it because someone's so embarrassed about it or just upset that it happened they don't want to tell anybody 
because I I'm know sure for a fact happened. there's been a ton of people that have had stuff like this happen, and that's just what, how it goes with a bow, unfortunately. I'm not saying it doesn't happen with a shotgun, but that's kind of why I steer towards shotgun hunting, just because it's like, I feel like the percentage of, you know, it's dead on impact pretty much if you get a good shot. With a bow, it's so, you know, there's so much technicality that go into it as far as Especially the vitals. if you're and, reaping and you're not yeah. waiting for that bird to come to and you. And the fact that you had a split second, you know, vision of it and it was right there and you had to shoot it. But like, uh, it was, it all panned so, out, you know, we were stomping through the woods, just freaking out, you know, we, we could have probably slowed down, chilled out, wait for the bird to, you know, we kind of, we pushed it off probably three times, four times, and it was just a fiasco, but I mean, you know. We did everything we possibly could to yeah. end, to finish the bird as fast as we possibly could. Yeah, we went could. back, we found the arrows that, there was one broken one, we found the other two, and, uh, you know, put another two arrows through it or whatever. And they're all center body hits. Yeah, and we looked at this bird, I mean, there's, we're not going to show you because of YouTube, but there's blood all over it on the leg because that was the first shot i think the first was, shot hit his leg. he hit his leg so that's why it was kind of limping when we were trying to get him that second time but you know obviously this is something we you can give us crap you can give mike crap but I, it's something that I'm happens and you know it's not like we're not upset that it didn't happen it's this we feel true. just as upset as anybody else would um, when something like this happens so it's not that we don't care we're not trying our best to get a you know a clean kill right away and uh you know, I just want to make sure that everybody understands that it's tough with a bow. And not that I have experience, but I have experience being with him. And it's so much different. And there's a lot more that goes into it. So just consider that when you watch all this and kind of how it played out. I know I didn't get footage of us going and getting them after the fact. but There was just some stuff that didn't need to be Not that we're trying to hide anything. There's just some graphic stuff that didn't need to be seen. Yeah. And... You know, we're trying to keep everything as family friendly as possible because we want people that are coming up in our shoes and you know, younger than us to be able to watch our videos and learn from them when they go out and hunt. And so we're gonna we try to keep everything as family friendly. But yeah. you know, it's not like we didn't do our research. This isn't. It's like I've researched turkey anatomy on, especially with the bow hunting. And it was just one of those situations where it comes in and you, it's kind of that one scenario. It's almost impossible to prepare for. Yeah. Um, you know, it'd been different if we at least knew the property. We knew we were going to set up here or a chance that we're going to see a bird or this is the angle you're going to see a bird. This is where they're going to come from. This is how far you're going to be. I mean, I didn't have a range finder on me. Um, didn't, I wouldn't have had time to range the bird. Yeah. There's no chance. Yeah. And it would have been that or you, Turbo would have got attacked by two turkeys. Yeah, I honestly <laughs> was – like that was flashing through my mind because I've seen videos of people with the Reapers. And that's why Reapers kind of like – you know, I used it last year to kill a bird – um, actually Maya killed this bird with it, but, um, it's kind of sketched in some situations because especially if that bird's fired up, he will charge that decoy and try to attack it. So at that point, when he was five yards in front of me, I'm freaking out. Like, dude, shoot this bird because he's going right, to come and, and attack and me. The problem like, I had was, you know, the way the crest of the hill is, you can see it now where I was sat, there's just a second crest that I couldn't, I couldn't see the body of the, uh, when Turbo had yelled at me that these birds were five yards from him, I could just barely see the tops of their fans and heads. Yeah, but I mean they were beat red heads, just ready. You know they were, they were, they were pissed off, definitely. So, oh dude, what a what a day. It's, what a I mean. It's besides be a, all the fiasco that happened with the not dying right away. I mean, we but, came out here. It's, this is our first day in Nebraska. At least like just me and you by ourselves. We did all we did was e scouting. We didn't come out here any day before to scout for spots um we started on a public spot this morning drove off looking for private spots and we're actually on our way out probably going to head home and michael spots these birds up in this cornfield they're up in this little pasture or whatever up here and it all planned out i mean i mean i wasn't expecting for it to happen to be honest but we got up here and those birds must have freaking charged through that bottom there because they were there and we had no clue, you know. Yeah. Because I, mean, I was look, were, I was staring at that far hill and the woods that whole time. They were, they were putting along when we seen them the last. And the I thought we, we had, I thought we had spooked them over there, and I was like, eh, I, I didn't, know. I didn't know if we spooked them. I thought they were going to come through a thicket over here down this trail. I thought they were going to avoid going through the heavy timber. Yeah. And you know, we we did a lot of running around this hill, and I mean, we were moving quick, you know, quicker than you know a turkey just averagely walks. So I, I'm guessing the second that fan went up. They caught 
caught a glimpse of that. And I mean, we even right now we're we're 200 yards from where we end up finishing the bird, and we could see the fan perfectly from that far. Yeah. That it looks it out. looked like a real turkey when I was back there where those birds probably came from, and there's that's definitely you know a huge reason they just came right up the hill there. And I'm sure they were just fired up because I mean they gobbled right in front of me and. They were both full strut at one point, so. Yeah. But, dude, it, uh, awesome job. It's definitely one of those ones where you kind of got to thank the big guy upstairs, and it wouldn't. Yeah. Be, there's no way we would have. I mean, we had some bad luck, but we had pretty good luck. I'm just glad it all worked out. You know, we got the bird, we recovered it. It wasn't like we shot it and it was wounded, and we just, you know, left it. We could have done that, but you know, that's with not the, the way we. The go. good hunter at heart and how all of us should be is. Do everything you can to recover what you have wounded or killed, whatever. Um, so it worked out. We got it. Awesome, awesome bird. You know, it's it's a heavy bird too, and um, he's got probably a I don't know eight nine inch beard probably. Um, his spurs will kind of roll some beer all over it, but he's probably got about an inch spurs, probably three quarter inch maybe three, close to an inch I'd say. But awesome spurs, awesome. I mean, just crazy how it happened, but. But uh, I'd say this is definitely a way to kick off the 2022 yeah. turkey season. I'd say that's. First day hunt. Yeah. It's kind of a bad luck omen, but uh, next hunt we'll be back in Iowa. With a shotgun. First season shotgun. Yeah. We'll be back kind of on our home field and we'll be ready to go. Yeah.